2020, the world went crazy, the channel went crazy, and the game of the future got shit on by a game made by three people. If there's anything that 2020 has taught me with games, it's to value simplicity and core mechanics over ambition. It's to build on the seemingly easy and more approachable to make it more complex as the game progresses. You don't need to have all these options if the variety is not finished. Why don't you leave me and you don't need to sell all this seasonal content if there is no content. I think the biggest surprise this year was Phasmophobia. Talking to ghosts, calling them a shitter, then getting your face eaten and getting to share that experience with friends. This game is early, but being made by one dude, it's an impressive feat. Just wait on this one for some updates and maybe a future console release. Oh, also, it has VR. Have fun. Alright, with that being said, for the first wrapped, these were the best games I played all year. You ever just have a take that you wish you took back? An opinion you maybe rushed and didn't give it enough time to sink in? Meet Cyberpunk, a game that I said didn't have game-breaking bugs, just fun bugs. Well, that was until I spawned inside of an NPC for the sixth time and couldn't progress a mission that I realized I, I can't do anything! Cyberpunk, please! Yeah, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. This game is carried by characters and story structures, but it just isn't functional enough to be a game currently on the market right now. A real shame if I'm being honest. But you know which open world and ambitious game worked perfectly fine on release? Hello, sweetheart. Grand Theft Auto V. Michael, Trevor, Franklin. Three main characters, each with branching plots crossing over until they all have to come together to progress. In a classic bank robber story, there's always that one wild card. But in GTA V, the devs said fuck that, and the wild card becomes emotionally dependent to the Max Payne character, with Franklin being the balance of both of them. The world adds to all of this with random NPCs being as alive as the city of Los Santos. Rockstar knew this, and after a bumpy start with GTA Online, it's so immersive that it's still one of the best-selling games seven years after release. <laughs> Doom Eternal is a game where you slay demons. Well, that's in any other mode than Nightmare. In those modes, it's all about attacking everything head-on. Now, if you want to be a little baby, you play on those modes. But on Nightmare mode... You roleplay as Alec Baldwin, the boss baby, dancing with demons and running around in circles taking advantage of everything the game has. This is the best way to play the game. Learning each demon's weak point, the best combos to deal with them quickly, keeping count of each weapon. Doom may get some bonus points for having a grapple hook, but really it's nightmare mode that makes this game worth playing all along. It's just gonna take some time, have some patience, but trust me, this is the best way to play the game. You know what's not so fast and intense like Doom? Stardew Valley. This, th this is the Doom cooldown. There's something so timeless about farming crops on an 8-bit lot that Grandpa gave you. Each day having new tasks that you can tackle but probably won't do on your first playthrough. This is a game all about playing your way and slowly progressing to become more comfortable. One day you might knock down some trees and get tired. The next day you might go fishing and realize you don't have enough space so you want to buy a backpack, but you don't have enough money for a backpack yet so you need to go mining to sell gems for money to buy the backpack, but then you don't have a strong enough pickaxe to mine those gems, so then you go fishing to sell fish to buy the pickaxe. This is a relaxing game. To buy a backpack. But then it's George's birthday, so you need to get him a nice plank of wood so he gives you better rates, but then you don't have enough wood so you need to chop down some wood and oh, looks like I'm out of energy for today. If the movie The Thing was a video game, it would be Among Us. Originally, I would play the Alien game in Jackbox Party Pack 5 and tell my friends, man, if only this was a full game, instead of just a mini game, wouldn't that be so much fun? Well, it happened already under all of our noses. If there's something Among Us is more than anything, it's a modern day example on why entertainment industries look to YouTube and Twitch for advertising. The exposure and popularity of this game can be directly attributed to streamers and YouTubers, but like I said to start this video, it's the simplicity of it that makes it special. 
keep adding to the game and keep hoping people have friends to play it with and among us won't be leaving for a long long time deepstone crypt raid good raid made a whole video on this next The Forest is a game about a man who is traveling with his son on a plane, when all of a sudden it goes down and a cannibal looking demon man steals your son and runs away. I'm going to give you the origin story on how I came to play this one. We were looking for some games to play on stream, twitch.tv slash evanf1997, go follow, when someone brought up The Forest to play. Little did I know that a Halloween game night would turn into a week straight of relentless fun, exploring the caves and getting my ass whooped. Caring about my resources, my stamina, the blood on my clothes, the battery in my flashlight, all of that should have made the forest a tedious game to manage, but I think the forest succeeds in giving the player a great sense of progression at their own pace. One moment you're looking for little Timmy, the next you're building traps to kill the local cannibals. One moment you're hunting for food, the next you're trying not to be the food. Video games and environmental storytelling go together like cheese on macaronis, and the game knows that by being an open world survival game, it needs an environment to deliver its narrative. Like I said, progression is at your own pace, and piecing together the main chunk of the story can be found from being in caves with little clues like drawings and videotapes. There's actually a pretty good story here too, with an ending that I won't spoil. I heard there's a spin-off sequel coming out and I'll definitely be on the lookout for that one. The forest was a banger. You are a horrible person. Now Valve has been missing for a while, but when Valve is at their peak, they make timeless classics. Portal 2 is a simple game that has mechanics slowly added over time and utilizes all of these in creative ways. The progression is absolute perfection. You start the game by being challenged by throwing a clipboard into a toilet, and by the end, you're sending in your Harvard astrophysics applications. If you haven't played Portal 2, this is a game of the year. Every year for your bank account too. On Steam, it's anywhere from $2 to $5 most of the time, and it has co-op. If you haven't played this game because you think puzzle games are boring, it's time to grow up. Also, that clipboard toilet shot isn't is that that's not an easy shot to make. I, I swear, I promise. Whenever I sat down to play games this year, there was one that kept calling me over. One game that every time I played it, I left with something great taken away. Hollow Knight is the best game I played this year. The boss fights. <laughs> The music. The exploration, which is as rewarding as it is satisfying. One moment I'm in a pit. The next thing I know I hit a wall and now I'm inside of a beehive fighting giant killer bees. This game is only $15 if you care about price and this being Team Cherry's first game, it has delivered on everything a Kickstarter sets out to be and more. I mean, hell, the final DLC, which came out very recently, introduced the Pantheon. Difficulty options, modifiers, a 40 plus boss rush fight to the hardest boss in the entire game at the very end. The pure definition of end game content. I can't praise this game enough. It's a game that you can just pick up and play for fun at any time that you want to. Like I said, the focus here is on simplicity and building on raw mechanics. You start the game with nothing on your map, a single jump, and a dash. But by the end, you're zipping through familiar places with new abilities, unlocking new areas, and to do more of the same. This Metroidvania masterpiece made by five people, with two of these being art and music, deserve way, way more love. Especially with Hollow Knight being their first official game and Silk Song to come in the future. In 2020, it was simplicity that won gaming over above all for me. And Hollow Knight nailed every category. So that's 2020 and my gaming list wrapped up. My goals weren't simple in 2020, 
but I built on those and in 2021, I want to reach even higher. I went from graduating college for a career in screenwriting for TV to writing videos in my room for all of you. So, uh, thanks guys. I appreciate it. I went from pushing myself for 50k subs on YouTube to going full time. So, I guess this is my first full time official announcement here. Hey, let's go! I accomplished all my goals and in 2021, with all of your support, I aim to reach new ones. These are my goals for 2021, and I think I got this. I want to reach 300k on the main channel, so if you're new, hit the sub button, help me out. I also started a second channel for YouTube, link in the description, and my goal is to reach 50k subs there by the end of 2021. I also want to reach 300 average viewers on Twitch, something that I absolutely think can be done too. And finally, I want to branch into variety content on the main channel, well, with videos like this, and not just be known for making Destiny content. Something that I know will take time, but I think it can happen. These goals are ambitious, but I gotta come out and say it if it's not obvious at this point. I made this video not just for you, I made this video for me too. So next year when I look back at how far we've come, I don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let you down. If 2020 was the year of simplicity, then 2021 is the DLC that improves on all of the core systems and makes the content even stronger. Thank you for listening and have a great 2021. Lots more to come from me.